The Celtic leader and legend that is Scott Brown, the 36-year-old has left Aberdeen, and looks set to hang up his boots for good following a sparkling career. Should he have left Celtic? I understand why he did, to be with a lifetime mate and take the first steps into management. But you can honestly say it's been the only mistake in the Celtic legend's career to date. Aberdeen's carefully worded statement stopped just short of saying that Scott Brown's playing days are officially over. But even if the 36-year-old is not yet ready to confirm his boots are being hung up for good, deep down he knows that he's finally reached the end of the road. The shaven-headed war dog of Celtic's historic run to nine successive top-flight titles didn't envisage it would end this way when he swapped Parkhead for a long goodbye at Pitodri. In fact, in the final analysis, it wasn't even half as long as he expected it to be. But when the final 12 months of his two-year deal with Dons was terminated yesterday afternoon, Brown was also leaving behind a glittering on-field career. A career that began with a red mohawk and a notoriously angry attitude during his breakthrough seasons at Hibs. But one which, ultimately, saw him become one of the most single-decorated players in the entire history of the Scottish game. And one of its most larger-than-life characters. As Gordon Strachan, the man who signed him for Celtic all those years ago said. The game is going to miss having a player like Scott around. And it'll be the same across the Scottish media too. People will be scratching their heads and thinking, what do we do now? We've had so many stories from this fella. Whether it was great moments on the pitch, good fun, daft or sometimes stupid, he's been a real giant over the years and guys like him don't come around too often. Brown's enormous trophy hall at Celtic, which is made up of 10 Premiership titles over 14 years, 6 Scottish Cups and 6 League Cups, will stand the test of time even if his body can go no longer. Add to that a League Cup triumph at Easter Road and what we are dealing with here is a true Goliath of the game in this country. That it has all ended so tamely, with documents signed behind the closed doors of an office in the Granite City, is the ultimate contradiction to a career spent in the ferocious glare of the spotlight. Brown never shirked it. In fact, on the contrary, he fed on the fervor of it all. Strachan went on, Scott may have arrived at Celtic in baggy jeans and kicked in trainers on the day he signed but, absolutely, he went on to achieve legendary status at the club. Look, there will be people who will ask the question, well, how good a footballer was he, and that's open to debate. But when it comes to being a giant of the game there can't be a conversation. Absolutely none. I've played with a lot of fantastic footballers, terrific footballers, probably technically more gifted than Scott. But out of all of them, none of them comes anywhere near the amount of trophies that Scott's got or the kind of legacy that he has left. Scott and I have conversations, talking about systems and coaches but I keep saying to him that every manager has their own style. The secret is getting good people and good players around you. Anytime I see a club not doing so well it's usually because the recruitment has brought people to the club that are causing the problem. Then you get the good people, guys who play their part and who want to get better. And then, every now and then, you get the gem. The gem is a guy who can make people around him great players. That is a gift. Scott has the ability to make the people around him great. That's what he's done over the last 15 years or so. The heady may have changed over the years but his fiery combative streak was still burning all the way to the end, until a painful, long-running hip injury forced him to concede that he can't continue to hold back father time forever. Brown might also have ended up in exactly the wrong place and at precisely the wrong time because even if he did plan on putting his creaking old limbs back on the line for one final season, it would appear that the new man in charge at Aberdeen's wasn't as keen on the idea. Neither man is likely to admit it in public. That Brown didn't give Jim Goodwin as much as a name check in his parting statement yesterday was just as telling as the fact that there was no fond farewell from the Irishman either. It seems this relationship was never likely to work and that comes as a surprise to Strachan, who knows Brown better than almost anyone else, and famously brought him back out of international retirement for a World Cup qualifier against England. At Wembley. Although Strachan insists, I didn't talk him into coming back. In fact, I had to tell him, you don't have to do this for me, I'll be fine. That's for sure. 
But you know what he's like. There was no holding him back. The thing about Scott is, he likes people. He likes being with people and he likes to see people doing well which is a wonderful thing when you are going into coaching. A lot of people go into coaching for themselves but the secret to being a great coach is being a bit like a doctor. You're there to make other people better, not yourself. Scott Brown is a close second to Billy McNeil in the greatest Celtic captain rankings. That's according to former Hoops hitman John Hartson. Reacting to the news former Celts skipper Brown has left Aberdeen to embark on a career in coaching, Hartson reflected on the 36-year-old's legacy at Parkhead. Scott Brown could be in line for a return to Celtic after his departure from Aberdeen, according to a report. The former Celtic skipper left the Dons on Tuesday just nine months into a two-year contract. The 36-year-old quit the Pitodri outfit as he aims to take the next steps in his coaching career. The ex-Scotland hero has not officially hung up the boots, but it remains to be seen whether he will take to the field as a player again. And according to the MSM, Celtic would be willing to create a pathway for Bruni to develop his coaching skills. The report states that Angie Postacogla already has three first-team coaches on the Parkhead setup in the shape of John Kennedy, Stephen McManus and Gavin Strachan. So, the opening could be within the academy and B-team. The club legend was in the running to land the St Mirren job just two weeks ago, so he may prefer to focus his efforts at the first team level. Today we look back and say Monia we mad Pfeiffer. And on that note have a great day Celtic fans. Let's roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the